Welcome to the Rude Dog Show. This is Rudy Reyes. You know, I had to mix it up, and I love that song. I had this other song. Something about it just says, wake up, smell the coffee, grab some U-Man, and make sure you download the app. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show at WBLZsports.com. Man, do I have a very impactful show for you right now. Not only do I feel pumped up, but yesterday I had a chance to uh, do some of what the pros do. Well, not really. I went to the gym. And it was kind of an enlightening experience uh, beyond the fact that I'm sore, which has absolutely nothing to do with, uh, well, it may have something to do with my next guest. Anyway, look, I'm glad to have you aboard. Thank you for tuning in. I have new hours. That's 10 a.m., excuse me, 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern. So I kind of moved over from being the latter afternoon to the early morning. So thank you for tuning in and sharing part of your day with me here on the show. Look, take this on the go. You can block your in-laws out if you want to. Whatever you're doing, download the free app. It is on iTunes and Google. And in the half part of the show, I'm going to welcome in Vasilios of Real BD Sports. Go throw him a follow. He's on Twitter, at Real BD Sports. B is boy. D is in David Sports. He'll join me on the show at the other part. Look, if you don't want to end up in the doghouse, you want to go to the show, download the app and enter the Rude Dog Show. Welcome. My next guest today, look, this guy is a fantastic specimen. And when I say specimen, I mean a 2017 NFL draft specimen. Always wonder what it would take to be this guy. Wonder all who enter the dome. Welcome. Hayden Henderson, who is a four-letter year special teamer, fullback, North Alabama University, and 2017 NFL draftee who's been bulldozing his way into scouts' mindsets. Hayden, welcome to the show. Thank you for taking your time to join me today. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Reyes. It's a, uh, it's a true honor to be on this show and looking forward to it. Well, good. I think everybody else out there is as well. Look, scouts, coaches, you may want to tune in for this. Hayden Henderson is going to put on a display of a different sorts today here on the Root Dog Show, showing his character, who he is, what he's about, what he's capable of doing, and how he plans on getting other people to switch gears and focus in on what he has to give. And certainly uh, no short end of the stick for you, Hayden, as we talk about your entrance into the NFL Draft. Look, you redshirted 2012, then from 2013 to 2016, you acquired a starting role with a forward letter and a fullback position and spe in special teams, your time at the University of North Alabama was good and, well, not so good times, or at least we'll approach that as the interview continues. Look, only after your team won the goal sound, not just once, but four years running. Look, that's one, two, three, four. Four years running. Seems to be a trend here with a number four and winning a conference championship four years in a row. Tell me about your richer experience in 2012. Did you believe that in 2012 you would even be redshirted? Well, uh, you know, in 2012, uh, I came in with a group of guys. There was 46 of us. And, uh, you know, it was Coach Bobby Wallace's uh, first year back at UNA after retirement and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, his, uh, his goal was to bring those young guys in and establish something that, you know, that he had back in the 90s, which, you know, they won three national championships, 93, 94, 95. And, you know, during that time, Coach Wallace preached on intangibles the whole time. You know, us, us guys really um, took the time and took the effort of, you know, realizing that, you know, we are a special group and we could do something special in the near future. And we knew it was going to take time. But, uh, you know, we we went in there and we worked our tails off every single day and uh, did what Coach Wallace preached. And like I said, you know, it, it's the little things every day and the intangibles and, you know, in 2012, we were 5-5. Five and five. We lost to Valdosta State 24-21 to win a field goal, and uh, they ended up winning the national championship. So, you know, at the end of that year, we knew we could do something special, and we knew it was going to take a special group of guys to do that, and that was, you know, my class of 2012. So, you know, every offseason, every spring training, you know, we knew we could do something special. So... You know, we got in there and worked our tails off, and we did we did the intangibles that Coach Wallace preached on, and you know, we listened to our strength coach, we listened to all of our position coaches, and you know, we just bought into the program, and uh, you know, 
I wouldn't trade it for the world. And, you know, in 2013, we ended up 10-3 and, and making a and making a run to the quarterfinals and losing to a Lenore Ryan, which they played Northwest Missouri in the national championship that year. And they beat us by three points, you know. We took Jacksonville State that year to triple overtime and lost 24-21 by three points, you know. And, you know, like I said, you know, we just – we came to realize that we had to buy into the program and do the little things that Coach Wallace and all of our coaches preached on. And, uh, you know, we bought in, and, and good things ended up happening. And, uh, you know, it was a blessing and uh, one of the best experiences of my life that I've ever that I've ever experienced in football and, and, and in the sports world. You know, I mean, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. And uh, I'm just very blessed with that opportunity. And, Happy that I got to be a, a be a part of something so spe- so special during that time. It definitely was special. You guys, I mean, look, four years in a row, you brought the GSC record for four consecutive championships, and clearly, this isn't a one person game, ladies and gentlemen. When you look at the types of things that you have to do in order to be a team player, you got to know when to sit, you got to know when to stay on the sidelines, you got to know that once your number gets called, you end up on the field, you need to make an impact, and it's on you in your individual role to make that happen and not just say, well, yeah, you know what, I think I'll be okay. No, you're going to be great. And unless you have that mindset, you're talking about buying into things, Hayden, when you talk about the types of things that you buy into and the intangibles, what are some of those intangibles that you believe that those intangibles had really attributed to the tangible things that you approached in 2012 when you redshirted? Um, you know, I think the intangibles played a role of, uh, you know, being the best scout team guy that there was, you know, to make those guys better on the defensive side of the ball because, you know, I played offense. And, and, you know, it's just, like, like I said, you know, it just goes back to the little things of, you know, working your tail off in the weight room every day as a red shirt and then also going out on the field every day, you know, and trying to make that defense ready for that Saturday. I mean, you know, just, just getting those guys mentally prepared and, you know, and learning the game better and, been through meetings and watching film and learning the offense that you're going to be running, you know, your next next four years of your college career and just buying into the program of, you know, asking the older guys, like, hey, what I do on this play and how this supposed to be done or how this play supposed to be ran, you know, it's just those things that, that make you a better ball player and the little things that make you a better ball player, you know. Doing those guys each and every day, you know, even though we're registered, you know, good things are going to come our way eventually. We just got to buy into this program and take one step at a time and 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 do the things that we're supposed to do and, you know, and just get after it every day and enjoy the process because our time is the next four years and we're going to make something special out of it. You know what? Four years is short. I don't know about you, but four years is next to nothing. And four years at a very small component of the rest of your life. And when you look at the types of things that you learn, you were in a group of guys who clearly were a part of red shirt situation. Did you feel that becoming a mentor to these guys or being a leader to the red shirt class was something that you carried into? Uh, and did you humbly accept that position? Um, you know, it was a very humbling experience because, you know, coming from high school years, uh, as I said, the big fish in the pond when you're a junior and senior, you know, mostly your senior year, but, but yeah, I mean, you come in and you sit through and meet your first meeting, you know, in college and they tell you, you know, it's just, we don't care what you did in high school, you're in college now, you're under our, you know, wing. This is how you're going to do it. I don't care your, your accolades in high school and what you did in high school is it's what you're going to do to make this university better. So, you know, I mean, being registered was very humbling at that time. It made you look at the bigger picture and made you think, well, you know, I need to get in the weight room and get bigger and stronger. I need I need to get better on the field. I need to do all the little things that's going to get me prepared to play these next four years because, you know, when I first came into UNA, I, you know, I was 185, 190 pounds, and I was like, man, I – to play this game and to compete with these guys, and we'll have to be bigger and we'll have to be stronger and we'll have to outwork these guys every day. So, you know, my my focus every day was to, you know, not only get myself better, but to push those guys around me to make them better. And, and you know, 
you know, even if you had a bad attitude about coming out of practice and not being able to dress on Saturday, you know, Monday through Friday, we're going to make each other better by, you know, getting the defense and the defensive people ready and prepared to play on Saturday. You know, it's just, like I keep saying, it's the intangible that Coach Bobby Wallace preached on and, and the little things that everybody preached on that, that, you know, that, that you really look at after your four years are done because, like you said, four years, you know, it goes by so quick. And it flies, and it flies by. And, you know, I look back right now. Them guys are in, you know, spring training right now, and they're in all-season workouts. And you're like, man, if I only had one more time to go back and do this one more time, I wish I could start it all over. But you know, that's why you capitalize on the moment, and that's why you take every day like it's your last, and enjoy the process. And like I said, I wouldn't have traded it for nothing in this world. Not at all, and I don't blame you. Look, when you're talking about situational. You know, you are you took the lead. You decided to, you know what, I'm going to be the rah-rah guy not only on the field but on the sidelines when whatever, in other words, whatever you needed to be, you were. Wherever you were designated to become, you were on your way to becoming. Was that initially received well by the people that you, the, the guys you had played with, or did you see some resistance in what message you were trying to convey to get the team motivated, get the individual players motivated on both sides of the ball? Um, I think it was a process because of the fact of, you know, you're a young kid coming in here trying to make a name for yourself. And, uh, you know, I think the more you work and the harder you work and the, the more you show up to practice every day with a positive attitude and you walk into the weight room with a positive attitude and you're looking at the guy saying, hey, man, come on, we can do this. Like, you know, like, just, just wait till next year. Like, it's going to be great things going to come towards our way. You know, I mean... It's a process. It's little baby steps, and you know it feels like it's going to take forever, but it, it really doesn't. And uh, I think it's more of earning somebody's respect on the field and off the field because you know it's not how you and how you carry yourself on the field, you know, all the time, but it's also the person you are off the field because that those two things play a big time role in, in the person you are and the people and how people you know respect who you are. So. You know, not only on the field, I was trying to be the best guy possible and the best teammate, but also off the field, I was trying to be the best guy possible for my team and uh, do all the little things right and be the best teammate off the field, you know? So, I mean, like I said, it's a process and it takes time, but I think once you earn that respect and you show them that you're there for business and you're there to make that university what it is and what it's supposed to be, then I think you earn that respect after. You definitely do. It, it certainly is a process. Look, sometimes you get a lot of resistance. You come on. It's a new system, new players, new people, new coaches. The environment is new. So there's a lot of things, a lot of facets to what you're trying to a, acquire when it comes to people's respect. This is something that comes overnight. You're talking about off-field situations where you want to prove not only that you're the best guy on the field in your respective position, but from a personal perspective as well, as you translate that into 2017 NFL Draft, where teams should be looking for quality guys as well as quantity. When I say quantity, I mean quantity as an internal characteristics, the types of things that make up somebody who they really, truly are. We make mistakes. We're human. We have issues. We have situations. But it's how you handle situations, not the issues themselves. And so when you're talking about situations, when you're talking about issues, Give me a situation where you had to uplift someone or maybe had to break up a negative a situation where you were the one who basically took it upon yourself to make it happen. Um, you know, I guess when you see injuries every day, you know, because playing college, college football, you know, any kind of football, you know, I mean, especially in the NFL, you know, the game is so physical now, and it's the speed of the game, and, you know, I mean, things happen, people get hurt, and, you know, um, like, you know, prime example, you know, our, one of our starting running backs story breaks the other past year, and he was having a breakout game against the Dallas State, and, you know, he took one little cut, and, and that turf, you know, playing it in that turf, and it just, I mean, it just, that stuff happens, you know, you can't prevent that kind of stuff from happening. And, you know, you can tell, you know, throughout the year, you know, we're winning and we're, we just won the GFT championship and we're the first seed of the 
team in the playoffs and we get a first round bye and then we, you know, win second round, win third round, play for a national championship, you will, you know, you can tell that I've seen him alive throughout the whole season, but, you know, the teammate I am and the teammate I want to be is a guy that's going to uplift somebody, you know, on their worst days and, you know, make their best days even, even better in their worst days, their best days, you know, so, so I try to inspire the young guys and, you know, even some of the older guys and, you know, I mean, you know, I, I'm one of those guys that enjoys training with, with the team before, before we go out there and play. And, you know, I just want to be an inspiration and a, uh, a guy that somebody can look at and say, hey man, if I need you, will you come with me? You know, of course, because, you know, that's what it takes. Like, I'm going to have my teammates back. I'm, I'm going to do everything possible to to do everything I can for my teammate, you know, that's lay my guts on the line every every quarter, all four quarters, all 60 minutes of that game, you know, I mean, just like I keep preaching on, you know, it's, it's the little things that people look at, and, and that's what I'm trying to present myself as, is that guy that goes out every single day and does all the right things and on the field and off the field, and that somebody can look at and say, hey, man, I, that's a guy that, that's a guy that's going to be there for you no matter what. And that's a guy that's going to lay his guts on the line for you no matter the situation. Situations happen. I mean, I'll be the first one to admit. I've, I've spoke to a lot of guys. I've run into my own for situations where you have to be the one in the middle to break things apart to help, to help the individuals understand that there's a clear path and the things that you should do and the things that you shouldn't do. And I can agree with you when you're talking about what you do off the field and how you represent yourself. I was talking to another uh, gentleman earlier on the phone, and I'd say, I said, look, it's not really what you do on the field. It's not really what you do in the locker room. It's it's who you are as a person. That would be inflected in the type of reactions to situations that mean the most, that coaches can look in the NFL. Uh, and again, look, coaches, scouts, general managers, this is a quality guy here. Hayden Henderson certainly has the right idea, the right characteristic, the right component that an NFL locker room really truly needs not only a team player, but he's very he's very athletic. He's very sound of mind, body, and athleticism. Look, let's talk about the golf sound. You broke the GSC records, but that was something extremely unfamiliar to you, but you contributed while you attended in whatever capacity they had you acquire uh, in, whether it be a special teams, a returner, or whatever situation it was, when you believe in the ability to win great things can and have happened, at least to you, while you're there. But when you're losing, it takes on a different mindset. 2013, your team lost quarterfinals against uh, Lenore Ryan. 2014, you lost second round against Valdosta State. 2015, lost the second round against Tuskegee. And finally, 2016, you had made it against a national championship matchup, Northwestern Missouri State, and it was almost a mind-numbing experience. What body numbing experience can you tell me about as you flash back to that game? Well, you know, first of all, you know, I mean, just just being able to go out your senior year and play for a national championship is one of the uh, most memorable moments of my college career. You know, I mean, you know, the things the things didn't turn out the way of, the way it needed to and the way we wanted wanted it to and the way we preached all four years of finishing, you know, what we started. But uh, you know, it was a blessing and a truly humbling experience. You know, that was one of the best weeks of my life of just being able to go down there and represent, you know, not only for your family, but also for the university that's giving you the best five years of your life. But, um, you know, we go down there and, you know, we play a outstanding, great ball team, Northwest Missouri State. You know, they, they're they winning all kinds of national championships, and we're like, hey, we finally get a chance at these guys. You know, this is what we've been aiming for for five years. This is what we've been working for for five years now. But, uh, you know, they're a team that wasn't going to beat themselves because they did all the little things right. And, you know, they they capitalized on the little things and they, they did what they were supposed to. And, you know, we made us some, you know, a couple mistakes. But, you know, I mean, sometimes that happens. And, you know, we bounce back. And, 
you know, I mean, not trying to say anything about the weather conditions or, you know, make an excuse, but, you know, I mean, coming down from the South, we never play in the snow, you know, I mean, you get in the stadium and it's negative 17 windshield, six, six inches of snow and two degrees, you know, I mean, us the Southern boys don't know what to think about, about all that kind of stuff, you know, I mean, that's, that's something we've never seen before, but them guys up north, you know, they're playing in quite a bit, so... You know, it took a minute for us to adjust and it took a minute for us to step back and realize, hey, man, we need, we need to buckle down no matter the weather conditions and no matter what's going on that, you know, we got to we gotta get after it. This is, uh, this is our last four quarters to play with each other and to, to accomplish that goal that we've been talking about for four and five years now. And, uh, you know, we... We didn't accomplish that goal, but like I said, you know, just being there just was a humbling and an awesome experience. And it's one of those things that, you know, that when we come back for 10 and 20 years and, you know, whatever down the road, that we come back and get the University of North Alabama and box us back to for our reunions, you know, that's something we're always going to have a smile on our face about and uh you know talk about for years because i mean you know we were there but we didn't capitalize on the opportunity we we didn't win the game but you know we we got there and that was huge to us but uh but i think being there kind of sets the tone for the young guys and the guys that that are there right now going through spring training and going through the all season and the guys that are coming in and signing up because i think it sets the tone for those guys that Hey man, like if you guys can do it, like and get there, then then why not us? You know, I mean, this is the last year for the University of North Alabama to be Division Two because they're actually making a jump to Division Division One Double A, and not this coming up year, but the following year. So, you know, I think that that sets those guys that are still there. I think it sets them to be home in a row and, and you know finish it out with a national championship. So, I think. Being there just really set the tone for those guys this off season. You know, when I see them, and you know, you go over to the weight room or you go to the facility, you can tell those guys are working hard and working their tails off every day to get back to where they need to be. Yeah, no, exactly right. You're looking at that game. I mean, it was a chiller. I don't mean how the game ended. I'm talking about the weather. You talk about six inches of snow, two degrees, not to mention the negative 17 wind chill factor. It may not be something that you look back on and say, oh, I remember how cold it was. No, you remember the pain of the loss because the pain of the loss is different and more excruciating than the pains that you felt in the cold. And when you think of that game, despite losing in a heartbreaking fashion, did you feel that you, yourself, individually, had given what you had during your time at the University of North Alabama? You know, I did. You know, I, I mean, when that clock struck zero, you know, I mean, my body just kind of just, it, it brought me to my knees, you know, and then, you know, my, my, both my knees just dropped, and, you know, tears started running through my eyes, and, you know, you, you, you have flashbacks. I mean, I, I had flashbacks of all four years of just, you know, dreaming to be there and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I had this, I had this feeling in there that, you know, it, it, I said to myself, I, I never want to feel that feeling ever again because I want to accomplish everything that I, that I, that I'm working for, which, you know, I did, but at the same time, we didn't finish like we wanted to. So, you know, I think that gives me the big stride and, making my pursuit to the NFL because, you know, this is this is a goal that every young kid has and every guy that goes to play high school football and then goes on to play, you know, college football. It's, it's a dream and, you know, the sky's the limit. So, I mean, that's why I'm working so hard each and every single day because of the fact that, you know, one day I don't want to regret not giving it everything that I got and look back and say, you know, I wish I could have done this, and I wish I could have done that a little better. So, you know, I, I think it gave me a little motivation and then kicking my butt to say, you know what, you know, you cut that once, but you ain't going to feel that. You're not going to feel that again. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Look, it, it's the steam. It, it's the steam. But the way that you ended individually outside of how the team, you know, fell to uh, Northwestern Missouri, it's almost as if, you were playing in your own title game, in your own personal game 
getting to where you needed to be? Did you believe that the cold affected your individual play or was it something that you didn't really think about? Um, you know, in my opinion, you know, I don't think we really thought about that because of the fact that, I mean, I think, yes, we did kind of think about it, but at the same time, I don't think we really thought about it because, you know, you, you come to realize when, when you run out of that dang tunnel and the fireworks are going off and you got your cheerleaders running out there and, you know, you see your, you see your home crowd, you see your family out there, you know. All, all that stuff kind of blocks away, and you're like, you know, we're here for one reason, and that's to bring that national championship back to the University of North Alabama, Florence, Alabama, you know? So, I mean, I mean, I think it had its factors, and I, I don't think it had its factors at the same time, because, you know, you're there for one 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 reason, and then, you know, that's to win the national championship. So, you know, I'm not going to sit here and make an excuse for ourselves, but, uh, you know, Northwest Missouri is a great ball team, and you know they they won they won fair and square that day. And I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. No, you just got to move forward. You got to recognize that a loss is a loss. That may define the overall school record. It may define how the team itself didn't get to where they wanted to be. But on an individual basis, look, those moments are precious. Every minute is precious. Every second is yeah. precious. It makes it more precious because that was your last game. That was the very last game of a very uh, hard-fought season. Uh, look, ladies and gentlemen, Hayden Henderson, fullback, North Alabama University. This guy is worth the look. He's worth the listen as we are doing it right now here on the Rudolph Show on WBLZSports.com. I'd like to uh, pay homage to Anthony Gilbert, who's an NFLPA agent. Not only does he handle agents who need representation but from a financial perspective he can do the very same thing i have to take a very quick break a commercial is calling <laughs> so stay tuned i'll be right back and then welcome in vasilios of real bd sports on the other half of this break this is rudy reyes on the rudolf show at wblzsports.com i'll be right back <laughs> Are just raining on you, not anyone else. I, I will tell you before you go any further. I cannot hear Chad when he speaks. Good. You're listening to the sea, man. I don't, I don't really know what we're doing. Every Saturday morning, eight to ten a.m. right here on WBLZ Sports. Doug Pepper painting a pressure wash. He has over thirty years of painting experience. His interior, exterior, commercial or residential. Doug Pepper covers it all. Is your house looking ugly? We'll call on Doug. Doug Pepper Painting and Pressure Washing, 404-966-3361. Mention WBLZ Sports and get a special We've Got Balls discount. That's Doug Pepper Painting and Pressure Washing, 404-966-3361. Hello, everybody. This is Blake Cohen, host of Off the Wall Baseball here on WBLZ Sports. If you love America's pastime, then join me every Wednesday afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern for the latest and greatest in the world of Major League Baseball. Whether it be your industrial, commercial, or residential needs, Gen Service is the electrical contractor for you. The Gen Service team has the expertise, commitment, and educational years to help you solve your electrical concerns. They have you in their best interest with helpful suggestions to accommodate your every want. Give them a call no matter the size of the job at 740-438-7173. And mention WBLZ Sports, you will get a discount. That's Gen Service, 740-438-7173. WBLZ Sports, we got balls, there's no spots, we should balls. Hey, welcome back to the Brew Dog Show. Yeah, I know, Chris, but you know what? I got to pay the bills, man. That's just how it is. Welcome back to the show. This is Rudy Reyes on the Brew Dog Show at WBLZSports.com. Look, download the app. It's free. Yes, free. F-R-E-E. -E. It's like two guys, two little midgets trying to break down a guy who's six foot tall, 385 pounds, and trying to tear him down. But you can't. You can't be free with a zero on your chest. 
Welcome back to the Rudy Show. This is Rudy Reyes. I am still joined by Heaton Henderson and, of course, welcome, Vasilios, Real BD Sports. Hey, Vasilios, how are you? What's up, Rudy? How you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great, man. How are things? Things are good. Things are good here on the East Coast. I mean, we just finished getting that nor'easter over here. Everybody, especially up in New England now, they're getting they're absolutely crapped on by this weather. But it, it's, it's, it's clear enough. The roads are getting clear. It's going to be a safe drive home for me tonight. Well, you know, you're, you're on to something. As long as you stay, as long as you have a beanie on, uh... And maybe a jacket or something. I think you're probably in a better spot than most people. Of course, uh, Pittsburgh just had a huge snowstorm headed to the northeast. And right now, I guarantee it's uh, smack dab in right in the middle of Green Bay, Wisconsin, right now as well. So, anyway, welcome to the show. Appreciate you joining me, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, follow Facilios at Real BD Sports. He's a partner of the Rudog Show. When I say partner, I mean a partner in audio crime. Uh, is there such a thing? I don't know. But we're going to find out. <laughs> I don't know, man, but we shouldn't make that. <laughs> well, it is. I already put li- uh, listenership on the uh, new vocabulary here on the Rude Dog Show. So I like the whole listenership thing because it takes more than one person to raise a ship and to get it rowing. So I don't know. It's a bad pun. This is, this is pun day uh, Wednesday. Yeah, that's it. Okay, anyway. Back to the show. Look, download the app. It's free. Google iTunes. Check it out. Join me and Vasilios as well as Hayden Henderson, who welcomes me back, fullback, out of North Alabama University. Hayden, we talk about stories. And a lot of those stories contain ups and downs in all collegiate sports, from end to end, any division, take your pick. But we really don't understand how the adversities affect the mindset of the players who are fighting to get back what they once had. We talked about it earlier. The injuries are not an exception to the rule. Sometimes when you believe a player can get back to where they were sooner than they would have liked, it could backfire. And people who know the best sometimes can be the best components to assist you. Let's talk about your dad. Let's talk about your dad. Let's talk about two friends that were really instrumental in the healing process for you to get back to where you were because in 2014 you experienced not just one knee injury. I can't even imagine one, but there were two. And after those two knee injuries, you played limitedly in four games. Let's talk about the recovery. What was it like to have experienced not one but two knee surgeries? And let's talk about the healing process that faced you moving forward. Um, you know, I mean, like you said, you know, two uh, two knee surgeries. I mean, it was, it was tough. I mean, but you know, during that time. I had positive people around me the whole time, you know, which, you know, having positive people around me the whole time makes it makes it a lot easier on you. You know, at the time you're thinking, man, two, I got two knee surgeries right now. You know, you're laying up in bed wondering, what the heck am I going to do? And, you know, having, you know, my friend, my best friend, Tyler Siles, and Brantley Johnson, and Eric Blue, and, you know, my dad, you know, being those positive people of, Saying, hey man, you, you know you got to bounce back. You got to, you got to get back right. And you know, going to physical physical therapy every day. You know, you, working your tail off to to get where you used to be, and you know, even better. So, you know, I was really pushed by those people and those people being positive the whole time. So, so during that process, you know, I was going to physical therapy every day and get my knees right and stuff like that getting ready for, you know, I wasn't, wasn't able to participate in all season that, that year. So, you know, my main goal was to get back even stronger than what I was before and, and you know, be be better at what I was before. So, you know, during physical therapy, I really pushed myself to where, you know, I wanted to break myself and see how my body reacted. You know, I wanted to push myself to the limit. And, you know, I wanted those guys to push me every single day, and, you know, once I got out of physical therapy, you know, my dad, uh, my dad really pushed me in the weight room that summer to get myself back right for the fall. And, you know, if I didn't have those people around me, you know, it has been tough to do that alone. So, you know, it was a blessing to have those people and to to look at you and say every single day, you know, hey man, things are gonna be good. God's got you in your hands, and all you can do is work your tail off, and good things are gonna happen. So, you know. 
having those people in my life and having the people motivate me and push me every single day really made me want to work even harder and made me want to get back to where I was and get back to even better what I was. So, you know, like I, like I said before, it was just the little things in life that you look at when things happen like that and, you know, great people around you. So, so it was, it was a blessing to have those people and, you know, after, after all that happened, you know, I, I bounced back even stronger and I was the strongest I've ever been. You know, I felt faster during that time. And, you know, and I can't thank those people enough for that, for that, that they, that they did during that time of, you know, a low point that I had during, during that season. Yeah, you said it best, Hayden, uh, when this is facility is here from Bad Door Sports, uh, this, uh, Rudy said it best, talking about your father too, and he's been such a huge influence on you. I've read several articles about how he used to play at Jacksonville State, and he had the chance to play for the Kansas City Chiefs, but but he, he passed up that choice. And do you, do you see it as, as your responsibility now, or you're, you want to make good on that decision now to to try to make it into the NFL and try to make your dad proud? Is that that type of thing? Well, um, you know, my dad, uh, he's that guy that's a positive influence in my life. You know, he's always going to be there no matter what. He's going to be proud of me, you know, no matter what. And, uh, you know, that that's my hero. That, that's the man I look up to every single day. That's the guy that I strive to be, you know, one day and hopefully be half the man that he is. So. You know, during this process, my dad's really, you know, you know, put a smile on my face because, you know, I mean, the nerve, the, the things that, you know, go through your head of, man, I got to work harder, or I got to do this better, or, I got to be better at this. And, you know, my dad just looked at me during the process and said, you know, you know, so I'm like, no matter what happens, and no matter what, what goes on, you know, do everything that you can and walk out of that place with a smile on your face saying that you did that you did what you were supposed to do. So, you know, I mean, with him getting picked up by the Kansas City Chiefs and end, end up not going, you know, in 1989, you know, he, yeah, he does regret that decision. But at the same time, you know, he said the good Lord had different plans for him. And, you know, he was there to see his oldest daughter, born, which is my older sister, Emily Henderson. And, uh, you know, he doesn't regret that one bit. You know, he was on coaching staff from, 1990 to 1993 at Jacksonville State University uh, because of the fact of not going, you know, and he got the experience of, you know, coaching two national championship games. So, you know, I mean, he tells me every day, do, do what you love and do it while you can because it's not always going to be there. So give it everything that you got and good things are going to happen. You're right. Good things are happening. They're happening for you. You're headed into an NFL draft. Have you spoke to your dad about what that feeling was getting into the NFL draft? And did he share those experiences with you during that time? You know, we have shared everything that's going on. And, you know, um, you know, I, I can't thank Scott Bergman enough for the opportunity that he's given. You know, I mean, a guy that's working his tail off every single day, just, just not for me, but all his other clients. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, I can't imagine the stress and the and and everything that he's going through, but I just really appreciate everything that he's doing. But but yeah, me and my dad talk about it. But you know, it, it's kind of funny. We don't talk about it every day. We don't talk about it, you know, every other day. It's just, I mean, we'll randomly talk about it. And you know, I guess that it's it's more of a blessing and more of being thankful and more of humbling and if anything because. You know, I mean, you look at it, you know, I went to New Orleans this past weekend for the regional combine at the Saints facility, and, and, you know, you walk in there and you're like, man, you know what, I mean, I'm really not the only guy that's trying to do this. There's there's a, there's hundreds of other guys out here trying to bust their butt and bust their rear end every single day to, to do what I'm trying to do. So, you know, I mean, so that gives you a little kick in the butt to say, you know, you got to outwork everybody every day, and you got to do all the little things every single day to, to to try to get there and try to get you where you want to be. And uh, you know that's to make an NFL team and 
hopefully, you know, bring something to the table that NFL NFL teams are looking for. Yeah, uh, yeah, Hayden, the, one of the main reasons Scott, uh, you, people are looking at you is because Scott Bergman said that you have maturity and leadership beyond your years, and you can do multiple roles for each team. And in a league that, that seems like there's a fullback renaissance on the way, how, how do you feel that you can fit in in the NFL? What can you bring to each team? You know, I mean, you know, not trying to say anything about myself, but, you know, I really feel, and, you know, I'm bringing, like you said, and Scott Bergman said, and, you know, I just bring different things to the table that I feel like not a lot of people can do. And, you know, I mean, not only play the pullback role and, you know, bring that physical and and want to and that, that determination pullback wise, but, you know, you know, I can long snap, I can run down on kickoff and I, I can I can set you a wedge on kickoff return or anything else you want to do and play punt team or punt return, you know. I, I'll do anything, you know, run through a dang brick wall if I have to, you know, I mean, I just... I just want to show them that I can do anything and everything possible to, you know, to make that NFL team and to bring to the table what they want to see in a player. And not only on the field, but, you know, that the guy going to go in there in the locker room and laugh and cut up and have a good old time in the locker room after a brutal practice. You know, just bring things on the field, but also bring things off the field as well. I look at... I look at who you are, and just in speaking to you, you can almost suggest, anybody out there who's listening right now, again, you can download the show here uh, through Google or iTunes to check out our conversation with Hayden Henderson. Uh, Basilios, the Real BD Sports, joins as well. But when you look at who you are, you're almost like an old soul in a new body, meaning that your attitude, your personality, how you approach things, a type of positive influence that you can be in an NFL locker room is something that NFL teams really should be looking for. And in the fact alone that they have not, uh, or at least in, in a minimalist kind of way, is really a, a disservice to what you bring to an NFL team. And I think that from a physical standpoint and, and the therapy that you had gone through, the struggles you had faced trying to get back to where you were, and to be even better, as you mentioned earlier in the show about becoming better, as to who you are, not only from a person, but from a player standpoint, is certainly something that teams, it would be worth noting. Look, GM, scouts, coaches, owners, take a chance on Hayden Henderson. If you want a quality, class, act, top-notch, top-shelf player and person and athlete, and son, somebody who you see as being valued to your organization, he is certainly more than available to take on that private workout for you. Contact his agent, Scott Bergman. We'll be more than happy to set that up for you. And of course, always welcome quality talent here on the Dog Show. Let's talk about the recovery, because the recovery is more important than the injury itself. Would you agree? No, most definitely. So five months worth of it, you're literally getting your wheels underneath you. You felt ready, willing to travel down a road you were very familiar with, and getting ready and prepared for the upcoming football season. The weight room was a familiar place to you, and you felt as ready as one could, becoming more prepared to take part in summer workouts. And as you became prepared, and when you look back at the painstaking process that you had taken, to get you to exceed where you left off, not back to, but to exceed where you left off prior to the injury. Do you believe that you've done everything you can to get back to normality? And do you believe an NFL coach, general manager, would be more than uh, adequate to make that call to you to work out for them sooner rather than later? Oh, no doubt. You know, I, I mean, like I said before, you know, during that process, you know, of course, adversity is going to hit. You know, I mean, you're, you're going to have those thoughts of, man, like, what's going on? But, you know, I mean, once I came to realize, like, you know, I'm good. You know, like, let's get an asterisk. You know, I mean, 
I'm just, I was the strongest I've ever been, you know, I, I was, you know, I'm not the fastest guy in the world, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, you know, I, I'm not the fastest person in the world, but, you know, I, I felt like my speed was a lot better after that, you know, I felt like I was more powerful, you know, like I said, it's just, it goes back to the guys that were pushing me every single day in the weight room and helping me get through that process, but, you know, they don't bother me anymore, you know, I mean, I feel great, you know, I mean, I work out and run every single day, and, you know, this past weekend in New Orleans, I mean, they didn't bother me one bit, they, they haven't bothered me in two, two years, three years, how, however long it's been, you know, I mean, it's been a while, you know, I appreciate everything that, you know, our team doctor did, did for me during that process and during surgery, and, you know, they got fixed, and, you know, like, like I always tell people, these wheels aren't, aren't done playing just yet. You know, I, I wanna, I wanna run them till they they fall off, and you know that's that's why I'm making a you know an opportunity, you know, every single day and a chance to prove myself every single day that that I can still play, you know, 12, 15 years, however long somebody wants to take on me, and just and just give it everything that I got to, you know these wheels fall off and my body falls off because, you know, I just love everything about the game. I love how physical the game is. I love, you know, the contact of the game. I love every aspect of the game. You know, I hope people want to realize, realize that. Yeah, I mean, the recovery is a really grueling process, as you mentioned, Hayden. And not, not only is it all physical, but there's definitely got to be there's definitely some mental, some mental uh, challenges in there as well. Just, uh, I remember I, I suffered an injury a few years back, uh, broken foot, and I, I can't imagine what you went through. But what I went, it was, it was impossible to, to try to get myself up to walk. Now, it t- it must take a really, really strong and but like, strong willed person to try to work through what you went through, and you, you have to have a no quit attitude. And I can definitely see that coming from you, and it's it's oh, something a lot of teams want to see, especially if if you're going to be one of those impactful players on those teams. I, I have to follow up with that. Why? Because it does take a certain amount of mental fortitude. It takes a very positive attitude, and those key components, your dad and your friends, to really support you to help be the rock that you need them to be in order to get back to where you were and exceed your own expectations as to what you're actually going to feel moving into this conversation of being a part of an NFL draft. And you had stated earlier, you and your dad don't talk about it much, but that that is a reality. That's where you're headed. That's where you're going. And I can see an NFL team taking a chance on you, picking you up and saying, look, we, we grabbed you for your character. You say to yourself, you may not be the fastest. The sense of humility that you have, Hayden, is, is bar none, probably one of the most humblest I've ever had the pleasure of having here on the show. So I wanted to well, just... Thank you. And, you know, that, that really means a lot to me saying that stuff. So, I mean, you know, that's just how my parents raised me. You know, always be humble and always be blessed and, you know, leave it in God's hands because, you know, at the end of the day, it's not in our hands, it's in God's hands. And, you know, God, God has everything planned out for us already. So, you know, I mean, I just appreciate everything that my parents did for me growing up. And, you know, and that's who they've made me in the beat. You know, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. There's no reason why you should. That's a part, that, that's an, in, that's a fiber of who you are as a person. It's a fiber of how they raised you and certainly on your way to becoming grabbed by some team in the NFL. I, I, I can almost see it already. Of course, I'll be watching the draft. Will you be watching the draft with Helios? Oh, you know you're you watching the draft. <laughs> uh, I, got, I already got some uh, some money on like the first ten picks. <laughs> get I do that little thing on NFL.com every year. They do that little little piece of junk. But you know, <laughs> how about you? Oh man, are you kidding me? I know Hayden's more glued to the TV set than anybody else. Are you gonna have your phone next to you or on your lap, or are you expecting a phone call at all, Hayden? Um. You know, I mean, I'll definitely be watching it like y'all, like y'all said, but, uh, you know, I, I'm going to have my phone, you know, right there beside me and, you know, uh, definitely be watching everything that's going on and, 
you know, hopefully get a phone call from, you know, Scott Bergman saying great news, and then hopefully, you know, have that phone call of somebody saying, hey, you know, we want to welcome, welcome you here, and, and uh, we'd like to give you this opportunity, and, you know, I mean, whatever, whatever happens, you know, I'm just, I'm just humbled by everything that's going on right now, and I'm really, truly blessed with what's going on, so, you know, uh, we always hope for the best, and we always pray for the best, and, so I guess it's uh it's a waiting game after my pro day on Monday and I guess uh I guess we'll see what happens, you know. Yes. Yeah, it is Yeah, this uh you know the Ravens just lost Kyle Usechek the free agency he was the fullback for the last four years. You know, we could always use another fullback here in Baltimore, especially for the Ravens now. So if you wanna if you wanna get get your agent I guess Scott Bergman uh to get out of some a little nuts to take you in the draft, uh, I wouldn't be opposed to that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, uh, you know, I would not mind being there in Baltimore, you know. I mean, uh, hopefully I can get uh, get to that cold weather, you know. <laughs> being from the South, you always get yeah. <laughs> cold weather. But, you know, um, I'll tell you what, like I keep saying, it's just be a blessing to be over there in Baltimore and be with the Ravens and, that's a big shooter feel, so uh, I, I've been looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. Of course, uh, because Asilos is a Ravens fan, I I am a Steelers fan on the other side of the bridge. Uh, I, I don't need to mention the Steelers' <laughs> accolades because they clearly run the roost in the AFC North and in uh, <laughs> and the NFL. So I had to just throw that out there. Uh, one one step below getting to uh, a, a, a record Super Bowl. Appearance, but you know we're not going to talk about that. We're talking about you, Hayden. <laughs> I wouldn't be opposed to having you in there. Either. We're going to talk about you. <laughs> we can we could use you in Pittsburgh as a blocking back for Levy on Bell. What do you think about that? Hey, like I said, anything would be you know a blessing, blessing, and you know whatever would happen, you know. That team would not regret having me because I'd show up every day to go to work and and do all the things that that they expect out of a player. And you know, I just I hope people realize that that I'm I'm going to be that guy that you know butts his butt every single day and and does all the little things of going to film and going to you know meetings and going to workouts every day because you know that's the grind and that's the that's the love that I have for this game. Well, the love that you have for the game is a love for the game to have you in it. And I think it'd be an even better lead with you as part of the 2,000-plus employees on the NFL teams, all 32. Look, Hayden, I want to thank you so much for joining me today on the Rude Dog Show. If there's anything I can do for you additionally moving forward, please let me know. Your, your pleasure to have on. I want to thank you for your time. And uh, I always enjoy interviewing players such as yourself because – it goes to show that there are class acts who are coming up and should very well be a part of an NFL roster, especially in the 2017 NFL Draft. Yes, sir. Well, uh, Mr. Reyes, I, I really appreciate you taking the time and the effort to uh, do everything to have me on this show. And, you know, I mean, it was a blessing. And, you know, I mean, it's a little thing that you look at, such as this right here, and it's something that I'll always remember and always uh, can share. And, you know, if my family tuned in, I just want to let them know thank you for everything that they've done. And Scott Bergman jumping to me, I just want to appreciate, thank and appreciate him for everything that he's done for me as well. And, you know, I look forward to uh, Monday, and I look forward to April coming up in the draft time coming around. And, um, maybe you'll hear it from me again. Hopefully so. so. Oh yeah. Again, I really do appreciate it, and I hope I hope the best for you. Oh uh, man, that 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 means a whole lot. I I don't think that I've had as much of a humble person on my show than I have today, Hayden. Ladies and gentlemen, Hayden Henderson, fullback, North Alabama University. This guy is a stud. If you, if you don't allow him to show you how much of a stud he is, you are missing an opportunity to have a class act guy on your roster. So anytime, Hayden, anytime, I'll be looking for you in the draft, I'll be listening, I'll be watching, and I'll be calling your agent if you get called. So be rest assured of that. Sounds great. <laughs> Thank Sounds you so great. much, Hayden. You take care. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, sir. You Thanks, Hayden. Hope you have a great day. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a great one. You as well. Take care, Hayden. Bye -bye. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Hayden Henderson, fullback, North Alabama University. Before he got on the show, I didn't know there was a North Alabama University. But now I do know. Basilios, what do you think of Hayden? Where do you think he will lie as part of the NFL draft? Is he fourth round, fifth round? Will, will anybody see what characteristics he has and how they can help an NFL locker room? Well, Rudy, I think I think a lot of teams these days, including my own team and even your team, they they look seriously for these high character guys. And even even if they not like just generally speaking, even if they're not the most talented guys, but if they have a high work ethic and they have just the know how and the good character, these guys can get taken higher than some of the guys that are all talent but no character. And I think Hayden, Hayden is one of those guys, except he got, he's got a very, very high amount of talent. He seems like a very good guy, very polite, very, just very knowledgeable about what he does and how he plays. And I think there's a bright future ahead for this young man. Absolutely right. Look, this guy has got back, not only has he gotten back that he's arrived, but he's been able to take any injuries, any setbacks, anything that's gone in his way and had given it to God and allowed him to relinquish the control and so he can focus on doing very positive, fruitful, uh, and dynamic things with the help of people that seem to love him very much and is the support system to help him get to the next level. Now it's time for the NFL to recognize what kind of guy he is, what he brings to an NFL team from an athletic standpoint, personal uh, and emotional from his IQ, everything needs to play a role into why Hayden Henderson deserves a chance to get to the next level, and that's the NFL. Bottom line. Yep. Yeah, that's definitely the yeah, NFL, man. Hey, Basio, tell everybody where they can reach you, where they can find you, where they can listen to all your great stuff. Oh, certainly. Uh, first of all, Rudy mentioned it earlier. You guys can find us on Twitter at RealBEsports. We do our new we do new episodes every Monday and Thursday. You guys can find us on SoundCloud, the Google Play Store, and of course uh, iTunes because Rudy hates iTunes so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but no, it's not. Back door sports. No, it's not a hate. It's not a hate. <laughs> hate. It's a it's a hate love relationship because they carry the Rudolph show as well. So there's nothing to hate there. <laughs> nothing, nothing to hate there. Even if it's a little hanging fruit. Even if it is an apple, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> of course, but also, also for all your listeners, Rudy, everybody, all the listeners can tune in tomorrow. Rudy is going to be joining us on our, po- our podcast tomorrow. We're going to be discussing March Madness, uh, NFL free agency, and whatever else we're going to talk about. Oh, yeah. The headlines are going on in the sporting world. Oh, yeah. Hodgepodge. A total hodgepodge yeah. of goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I look at. March Madison, hey, ladies and gentlemen, I want to let you know that uh, tomorrow as well, I will uh, be in, in a Los Angeles uh, location talking about March Madison. It'll be live on Periscope, so tune in for that. Uh, anyway, with that said, Vasilios at Real BD Sports, thank you for joining me. This is Rudy Reyes on the Rude Dog Show at WBLZSports.com.